For about 25 years, I worked in IT, working with software and hardware and every day kind of working with different challenges, uh, a lot of fixing of things, not any programming. When ChatGPT came along, I decided to see if I could get it to program something with my text-based guidance, telling it, oh yeah, I like a, the window this size, or you know, I want you to do this, or can you do this? And it would generate the code for me. And after about a year, which uh, there's a lot of pain and suffering, but also a lot of learning uh, that's gone into this, uh, I've come up with a, a piece of software that I can use to automate a lot of the camera work that you see within my slot car layout. And as a result, I just want to show off some of the things that are, they are. Frankly, we spent, I spent about a year working on it. I think it's a pretty useful uh, overall tool. Unfortunately, because of how difficult the setup of the environment has been, I really don't think it can be released, but I certainly am happy to kind of share some input uh, or some insight to folks if they have any questions and want to do something on their own. Um, you know, I could certainly provide some guidance. There's so much logic behind this stuff. I'm amazed with places like Fast Laps or uh, Race Coordinator or uh, Smart Race or any of these, the logic that's behind all of this stuff. So. Anyhow, without further ado, I'm going to show you some of the stuff. Uh, the first part is it's all controlled with a camera that is mounted above the ceiling. You can see that right here. And then the lighting and uh, the ability to turn things on and off, that sort of thing, uh, that's all controlled with an Arduino. And then I have a dongle that I got from LEB Hobbies uh, from it's a digital racing solutions uh, USB dongle that connects one uh, one side connects to your digital uh, Carrera, sorry Carrera digital CU, and the other end connects to the, the uh, PC and allows you to connect and uh, control things that way. So let's see, and that is this one right here. And so in terms of this. You kind of see how how the guts work and that sort of thing now let's let's give you a tour so you've got your main window here and you've got you can see here you've got the overhead view of my table or of my layout this is an 8 by 12 uh, layout you've got your lighting control section here this is where all of essentially all of my lighting takes place um, and also really anything that can be t turned on or off using the arduino Theoretically, I can just add another another uh, button here. The next section, uh, change OBS camera to that section. These are all of the embedded cameras within my layout. I use a, a uh, program. In fact, right now I'm recording on the program OBS Studio. So what these buttons do is, as I'm sitting here looking at this view, I can change the camera of what to what you guys are seeing that's I'm basically saying this is okay this is what I want my viewers to see whether it's the Goodyear blimp or the front stretch or the southwest corner etc working your way through there so click on one of these it'll it will move and so in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna do that right here and you're gonna see what's gonna happen it's just gonna change the change the view and then I'll have to move back real quick so Goodyear blimp that's what this one is Let's see, and then we will move back to there. Front stretch. And I'm just gonna go through here. Southwest corner. Northwest corner. So, yeah, pit view. Marshall's hut. Uh, Wildwood corner. Tunnel. And then the embedded uh, grandstand camera. So now let's go back here and you'll see Carrera controls. And this section is at this section that where I can just I can starter or pause a race. And you probably I gonna kind of have to run back and forth a little bit to demo this, but we'll click that again. Hopefully you guys can hear this in just a moment. Uh, 
and we've all heard that sound so you can see I've cl clearly made the connection there that's great because what I can do then is if I have a sensor that wants to somehow control or uh, be controlled or at least be read by this program let's say hotspots oh yeah I added to the, this part so what I did is the the uh, program looks down from the from overhead and it looks inside all of these little green uh, hot spots or these little green uh, rectangles inside that if you're viewing it that way instead of viewing the whole camera if you're processing just inside those little rectangles instead of inside the big rectangle which is the entire screen you don't use anywhere near the same processing power so it makes it a lot more efficient a lot more responsive so when the car drives through these different rectangles it can trigger either a sound uh, an applica uh, a launch of an, app an application it can send a keystroke um, and so I'll demo that in a couple of moments here but something I want to point out here is you'll see here a, uh, a little square there and that's clearly off the track there's another one over here off the track the one right here off the track and so what's what's the point of that well the point is that if I reach if I send my car crashing over here I've got sound and I can pause the track if I want to automatically let's say the track somebody comes along and just smashes in here same thing and yep there we go so I think you guys get the I think you guys kind of get the point and then in this case on that one you could see I I had it pause the race for 10 seconds and then start the race again so if somebody crashes in one of those sections it will automatically pause the race for 10 seconds or whatever amount that I define in there and so folks can go get their cars everybody can take a moment take a breath and then from there you start back up without any question of somebody catching it you know getting half a lap in front of you or whatever so so let's see I'm gonna go here and we're gonna put this guy ghost car on the track there and I'm just gonna kind of show you how this hotspot tracking works as the car goes through these sections it's going to randomly go through available cameras uh, that I have assigned to those hot spots or to those rectangles I know it's kind of complex complex and or maybe I'm not explaining it very well I apologize there's just a lot to it and it's been a lot of work to get it there so uh, essentially when these cars go through these things it's going to switch around those can to these it's going to trigger these different camera switches or these different scene changes when it does that what's going to end up happening is if you don't control it as the car just races through here think about how fast your slot car goes through your course and so if you if you have a five or six second course if you're going through eight cameras nobody's going to want to watch it and really it's going to be almost i mean it's just almost unwatchable if anything so i have a section here uh, uh called a cool down and what that does is that limits how often the scene can change and so or how how often the camera can change and that just gives it essentially a sense of order and then i also have a randomization script written into it uh, or a function written into it that helps to make sure we're not just seeing the same camera over and over again so we'll start with that uh the next well yeah so let, let's start here and we'll just show kind of how this works so i have a ghost car on the track we'll click start right and see how it just triggered that guy and now you've got about eight seconds I have an audio sound that shows right as you cross over the starting line
and so on and so on. So how do I define where these rectangles are? Well, I use the hotspot editor. So I click here and let's see if I can get this properly set up so you guys can see it. Yep. Okay. So here's the other part of the program that I that I wrote. Or I I feel weird even saying I wrote it because really AI wrote it. I just kind of thought it up and really followed through with it. Um, what you can do is you can create these hotspots, which are the ones we just demonstrated. And I can move them around if I want. Or I can resize them. Um, if I want to change something in them, I can go in here and you've got your name. I have available wave files that I've put in here that you know that you could use. Or you can put in an executable path uh, and that can be whatever whatever you, it, you want it to be. You just have to put it in the proper spot. This says how often it could be. This is a separate cooldown from the other one that says how often it can be triggered. That way you're not just when you reach in to grab the car you're not hearing the sound of the crashing car 15 times in two seconds. Uh, special hotspot, special cooldown is way too complicated right now to explain. Uh, enabling red flag. What that does is that means if I click here, what happens is over here there is a red section um, or a red, uh, the fence is basically red along here and that will come on when a red flag warning comes on and it'll flash. So what I'm doing here is saying, okay, if, you, if we hit this, flash that red light. And what that'll do is also pause the track uh, for the seconds like I, like I was talking about. And then you can save it or you can delete the hotspot. Anyway, and so I'll show you how to just make one. Well, let's say we wanted, to, we wanted to trigger something to happen while the car was driving through this section. So you just create that little section there. It brings this up. Enter in the stuff, just like I said. You don't like it, click X, you're done. All right, and then let's see, I think that's that for that little portion. And all this file, all this portion does is basically it creates a configuration file that the other port, the other program reads. And so we'll go back to that. Give me just a moment. All right, and so you can see here, if I turn off the hotspot tracking, this is that configuration file that I just set up. So, uh, from there, I think that is it. Uh, let's see, I can, here's the red corner. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that'll help. Hold on, let me plug in. There we go. There's the red corner, um, you know, caution uh, lights. And so as a result, those go on. So just a quick rundown on the technical management of my layout. And I think you're gonna find here, it's pretty horrifying actually. Um, but it works. Um, we have here the Arduino. This is the primary Arduino that I'm using. You can see I'm using a fair amount of fair amount of the inputs, not all of them. That's a Mega 2560 Arduino. Uh, it's connected to uh, 20 channels, of which you can see there's a number of, or quite a few that are not being used, and there are a fair amount that are. You can see my awesome uh, soldering or connection uh, stuff that I'm doing here it this is essentially temporary and uh, yeah I'm expecting I'm gonna have to tear this whole thing out uh, at some point uh, when I move this layout that having been said for the time being it works so this is where everything's coming from you can see there's essentially a trunk here and those are uh, primarily uh, cat 6 cables and then also telephone cables before I realized that for what I was paying for telephone cables, I might as well just get Cat6 and use the copper lines inside of those. And so that goes down under the desk here, excuse the complete mess, and that goes in the crack of this concrete. There's a seam, and then I have it protected there, and it ends up going into this mess under here. And under here, you can see it shoots off to different sections. So you can see I have a lot of revamping to do um, once it does move. That having been said, all of these, these are the different uh, power over ethernet switches that control all of the cameras that are embedded in the track. 
So if this thing isn't working, we're in trouble. But um, everything essentially works from there. You have the digital racing solutions uh, dongle right here. Uh, and I got that from LEB Hobbies. That goes down uh, to a powered USB hub here. That also, that USB hub connects to a camera that is embedded in the, uh, in the grandstand. It was a spare camera. Not as high quality as I'd like, but it, it was better than nothing, and I was able to embed it in the, can in the uh, grandstand. That having been said, it all goes back under here, back to the computer. So getting the environment to work uh, for this software really takes about six to seven hours to compile and build and all of that. I have not gotten that particularly honed, honed in. So it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to be able to go out and release it. However, and especially with all of the custom Arduino stuff, there's just so much involved. That having been said, if you have questions um, and you'd like to know something, I'm happy to share what I know. Um, and just leave them in the comments. I'm a horrible marketer, a horrible video editor, that sort of thing. Uh, forgive me for that. However, if you do like what I'm doing, if you can like and subscribe. Um, some of the things that I do think that I've learned from this, number one is some of the, uh, the broader expanse of programming, some of the things you can do and can't do with some of this technology. The technology being open CV, open computer vision. Uh, it's a technology that essentially uses the, it's a computer, you know, a computer program that uses the camera as though it's its own eyes and it tries to interpret. You just have to tell it what to interpret. Great product. Very, very difficult to configure and get running. However, now that it's running, I'm very happy. And really, that's what it comes down to is I built it specifically for myself to be able to control my layout mostly so it would be able to automatically change cameras so you guys can see what i'm doing on the race on the, on the layout if i'm racing the cameras are switching it looks more realistic and it's not boring you're not just looking at the same camera for you know 10 minutes at a time and it's a few you know 8 10 15 seconds at a time it's a much more enjoyable watch so Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I apologize for the length of the video. It's a, been a big project and I just, hey, it is what it is. So thank you very much and have a good day.